In this video, we're going to do a free fall problem where you throw up. You throw up off a 40 meter building, literally. The velocity of your vomit is 2 meters per second upwards. What is the maximum height the vomit reaches? How long is the vomit in the air? How fast is the vomit going when it hits the ground? This is a classic throw up problem. Let's go ahead and draw, to the best of our ability, the vomit. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the ground here eventually. We're going to call this zero. Um, and why not? Our initial height is 40 meters. Now I didn't write y equals zero at the ground um, just because we're going to go back and use two different final heights. But anyway, the top of the building is 40 meters, so we put the ground at zero. And when I draw this throw up, I'll just draw the throw up, not you throwing up. That's <laughs> disgusting. So here's the throw up. Okay. It has an initial upward velocity, v naught, of positive 2. For part A, when you're asked to find the maximum height that the vomit reaches, we're going to say, okay, what is... Here's the vomit on the top of its path. What is that height that you reach um, when you're at the very, very, very top and your velocity has been reduced to zero. Okay, so for part A, the information that it gives me is a initial height of 40 meters, an initial velocity of plus two, and without saying it, part A requires that I know that at the maximum height, the velocity is zero. Now I would make y my um, final variable, the thing that I'm looking for in this case. Now, we also know that in all these problems, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, because g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we know the acceleration without having to find it. Okay, notice that I'm given all of this information, y not v not v, y, and I know the acceleration, but I don't know time. That's a dead giveaway that I should use the ain't got no time equation, or the equation without time. Remember we replaced the acceleration with negative g, so it becomes negative 2g, um, and then this is delta y plus v naught squared, but it might be better for us to write y minus y naught instead of delta y, uh, because we're going to want to find that height that it reaches, and we know the initial position is 40. Okay, so um, to do that, first I'm going to plug in anything that's zero, so the final velocity at the maximum height is zero, so that goes away. And now I need to try and get um, the final height, uh, y, the final position by itself. This is going to prove to be a little bit tricky. First I'm going to add this to both sides. Um, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2g so that the 2 and the g goes away. And now I'm left with y minus y naught, which I can take that out of the parentheses now since nothing's being multiplied. Um, and I realize that to find the final height, y, I need to take uh, the y naught and add it to both sides. Okay, so now I have an equation to find the final height. The initial velocity is 2 squared over 2 times 9.8. I'm um, sorry, plus 40. Now this is going to give me a height relative to uh, the top of the, bill, or sorry, the ground at zero. Um, so it'll be a number above 40. So that's 4 meters squared per second squared over 19.6. The meters cancel one. The that's the second squared. Second squareds cancel. Uh, 4 over 19.6 is. 0.204, so we'll just say 0.2 plus that 40 meters, so the maximum height that it reaches is 40.2 meters. Uh, now again, that is relative to the top of the building of 40 meters. Okay, great. Now, let's figure out how much time the vomit is in the air for. So part B. 
um, and I'm going to get rid of this Y at the top um, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the entire path. Really goes straight up and down but we're going to just to make it easier for ourselves give it a little bit of a curved um, path so that it looks like it's going up and then missing the edge of the building. Um, okay. So one way to figure out how long the vomit is in the air for uh, is to figure out how much time it takes to reach its maximum height and then figure out how much time it takes to fall um, from that maximum height. Doing so takes up a lot of time, so I'm just going to show you a very quick and easy way to do this. You know that the initial height is 40, and you know that the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down. You know that the initial velocity is plus 2, um, and you know the final height is 0, and you would like to find time. Now if you go to your motion equations, the equation that has y naught, v naught, y, t, and a, or g in it, is going to be this position equation. Negative 1 half gt squared plus v naught t plus y naught. Um, now there are two things that you could do here to solve for time. One is you could plug in all of your numbers. Um, and try and get a, a solution for t. Now if I did that, I'd get 0 equals negative 1 half 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared plus 40 meters times t plus the initial height of 40 meters. But this is going to be difficult because you can't easily solve for time. You can't easily get it by itself unless you recognize that this is the A term of a quadratic, this is the B term, and this is the C term. And in order to solve this, que this question, um, or to get an answer for time, you would have to use the quadratic formula. So you can use a quadratic formula to solve for time, or if you prefer, you can uh, not plug in zero for the final height, and just think of this as a graphable equation with the A term being negative 1 half, 9.8, which is 4.9, um, and then the B term being 40, and the C term being 40. Oh, you know what? Sorry. This is supposed to be 2 meters per second. Sorry. So anyway, I can think of this as a graphable equation. Um, if I was to get rid of the units to make it a more friendly graphable equation, it would be half of negative half of 9.8 is 4.9 t squared plus 2t plus 40. So I could write this as a graph-friendly equation. Then I can get my graphing calculator, and you would plug this into your y equals. So you'd press, let's start from the beginning, y equals, uh, then negative 4.9, you'd use x instead of t, plus 2x instead of t, plus 40. Okay, then you can graph this equation and you would get a picture of how the vertical y motion changes with time. And to figure out how long it's in the air for, you just want to find this intersection right here where it goes to zero. Um, so that on your calculator is actually something that's called the zero. So to find that, you would go to second calc zero. Uh, it wants you to go to the left of the intersection, which I can't see the cursor right now. Oh, there it is, okay. So you go to the left of where your function crosses zero, press enter, then go to the right, press enter. Guess, you can just press enter, and it will tell you that you will have a y, which is this, of zero, when you have an x value, which for us is t, of 3.068. So we'll say 3.07. So at 3.07 seconds, you will be at the ground. So that would tell me the amount of time it takes to hit the ground is 3.07 seconds. Okay, good. Um, now that I know how long it takes to hit the ground, I can work on part C. Part C asks, how fast is the vomit going when it hits the ground? Well, to find that velocity, first I'm going to recognize that that velocity is negative, definitely going to be negative because it's going down and it's going to be bigger than 2 meters per second. So some no negative number that's bigger than 2. Um, and 
I could use basically any equation at this point. The easiest would be to take advantage of the fact that I still know the initial velocity. It's 2 meters a second. Um, and the acceleration is 9.8. Uh, but now I know the time is 3.07 seconds. So if I want to find the final velocity at 3.07 seconds, I just use this equation. And I don't even have to rearrange it. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 3.07 seconds plus 2 meters a second. Okay, that's going to give me uh, negative 30.086, um, and then one of the seconds will cancel, so it's a meter per second, plus 2 meters a second, which is going to give you negative 28.086, or why don't we just say 28.09 meters per second as the final velocity right before the vomit reaches the ground. All right, congratulations. Um, you have done some example problems with the free fall motion equations, and now you are a superhuman that understands physics of falling objects. Congratulations, this video is done.